So I was checking out this new Google DeepMind Gemini era landing page they've put together here. It's got some really cool things in it, but one thing in particular caught my attention. And you'll see as this video comes into play here at the bottom of the screen, you can see it kind of reveals itself almost as if part of the video is behind a curtain and it's being slowly revealed as you scroll down the page. Now, of course, we've seen some effects like this before, but typically what you see is an image that starts out small and gets bigger as you scroll down the screen. But that's not quite what's happening here. Here, the image is saying the same size, but there's a mask around it that's actually being revealed as you scroll down the screen. So of course, I wanted to figure out how I could do this inside of my stack using Generate Press and Generate Blocks. Now it did take a few iterations and I am gonna use something that doesn't have 100% browser support, but it's really not gonna have any negative effects for somebody who's using a browser that doesn't support this. So I really don't see any downsides there. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set this up with just a few lines of CSS and be able to easily add it to any element on your website by simply adding a class to it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around and let's get started. Okay, for this demo, I've gone ahead and set up a page here. You can see there's a lot of just dark black screen. Then we scroll down and we have an image here. And then there's some dark screen underneath that. To achieve that, I just have a pretty simple layout here. It's got three sections. The top section and the bottom section both have a minimum height of 100% viewport height, just to give us some room to scroll around. Here inside this middle section, I have our wrapper, our inner container, and then an image. Now this image is actually what we're gonna be doing this reveal effect on, but like I said, you can attach this to anything on your website. I would just caution you to not get too crazy with it. So what we're gonna do down here is go down to the additional classes here, and we're gonna call this OWD hyphen reveal. So with that set, we'll go ahead and update this page. We'll jump onto the front end and jump into our customizer so we can start writing some CSS. Here inside the additional CSS tab, we'll click in here and we'll start writing our CSS. So the first thing we need to do is target our class that we just made, which was OWD hyphen reveal. Of course, you can call this whatever you'd like. Here, we're gonna do animation and we'll call this a matching name, so OWD Reveal. I just did a video on how to do these CSS only scroll-based animations. I'll put a card that should be popping up here now for you to take a look if you didn't see that. But here what I'm doing is saying, hey, the animation name's gonna be OWD Reveal. The timing function is going to be linear, and we're going to have this animation go forwards, which is just going to keep it from repeating or resetting once the animation runs. Now what we're going to do next is animation hyphen timeline, and we'll do view with open and close parentheses. Again, like I said, this doesn't have perfect browser support, but it works here in the most popular browser, anything Chromium based. So we'll get a whole lot of use out of it. And like I said before, if somebody's browser doesn't support it, they'll just see an image, so it won't be a huge problem. Next, we're gonna do an animation hyphen range. And for this, we're just gonna do the word entry. Now we need to go ahead and set up our keyframe animation for this. So to do that, we're gonna type in at keyframes, OWD hyphen reveal. We want this name here to match the name we set here. And now we can open and close our curly brackets. Now we're just gonna have two stops in this animation. So we can do a 0% and go down here and do a 100%. We'll go ahead and open and close our curly brackets there. And we're actually going to achieve this by using a clip mask. So to do that, we're gonna do clip hyphen path. And we're gonna do an inset, which is gonna go inside of our object. And to set how much we wanna inset this, we're actually gonna use a percentage. So I'm gonna do 25%. Now here at 100%, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this clip path I created, and I'm gonna change this inset to 0%. So now if we go over here on the side and we scroll up, we can see our image as it comes in is getting revealed. You can see more and more of that clock behind it. So our effect is already taking place right now. Now I picked some dark images here, so it is a little bit difficult to see. Let me just go back here and replace this with something a little bit brighter so this image reveal effect is a little bit more obvious. We'll go ahead and update that, refresh it here inside the customizer. And now we can see as we scroll down, this image gets revealed as we get further into the viewport. So this is a pretty neat effect that's actually achieved with just a little bit of CSS, but we can do a few things here to make this a little bit more manageable over time. 
One thing I definitely wanted to do was set a border radius on this image. Now, if I just went to the image itself and did border hyphen radius, let's say 16 pixels, this isn't gonna work because our clipping mask is actually clipping that border radius off until we get all the way to the bottom of our scroll and now we can see our border radius. However, we can fix this by setting a border radius here on our 100% clip path. So here inside of that inset 0%, I'm gonna do a space and I'm gonna type the word round and then I can do a matching value as my border radius, which was 16 pixels. And we can see now as we scroll through this here, that border radius is actually shrinking. It's gonna shrink down to zero, but that's gonna happen once it's off the screen. And it's going to subtly go from zero to 16%, which I think is actually a pretty nice little effect there that makes the border radius kind of grow as the image gets more and more revealed. Now, you might not wanna have these magic numbers as far as setting a value here and a value here. And this is where something like custom property could come in handy. So we could say, uh, a custom property of radius, and we'll put in here 16 pixels. And now instead of putting 16 pixels in here, we can do var hyphen radius. We'll go ahead and copy this, and we can also use it down here for this value. So now if we wanna change that border radius, let's say we wanna do something very extreme like 36 pixels, we can just change it in this one place, and this custom property is going to reference that value up here. So that's one way we can make this a little bit more manageable over time. The other thing we might wanna do is change how much this is inset. Now, I picked 25%, which is gonna cut this image down quite a bit. I'll scroll till it's almost off the screen here so you can just barely see it. And we'll play around with this number so you can see what kind of effect it has on it. If I change this to 50%, the image is basically going to disappear because this clip path is being inset 50% from all sides, which basically means it disappears. Now this works fine, except it's gonna make this animation happen a lot quicker as people scroll. If the image is going from nothing there all the way to 100%, just in the time it enters the viewport, this might be too strong of an effect. Now if we went down to something like 10%, we can see here when it's just out of the viewport, you almost can't tell that this image is getting bigger. So for me, that effect is a little bit too subtle. So you can go in here and play with this percentage. I found that 25% is enough to make sure that the effect is noticeable, but not too distracting. Of course, every use case may vary. This is a specific use case where I'm using a big image that takes up most of the screen. Like with all animations on websites, you definitely want to make sure you're using these things sparingly and not overdoing it. But I thought this was a really cool use case for a subtle animation that brings some life into a landing page. I noticed this right away as I started scrolling down that Google landing page, and I knew this is something I was eventually going to want to incorporate into one of my own builds. Now, just like the other video where I told you you could use this inside of a prefers reduced motion media query. This is something you'd probably wanna do the same here. So if you didn't catch that in the previous video, again, there's a link down in the description where you can go check that out. That's just gonna ensure anybody who set a preference to have reduced motion on the website won't actually get that of effect and that's gonna respect their preferences, which is definitely great for accessibility. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll see you next week.